If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice of the same old lies If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fire. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. And there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, oh, he's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice of the same old lies If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fire. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. And there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, oh, he's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, 
If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice of the same old lies If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker if you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a savior, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fire. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. And there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a savior, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, oh, he's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. Believe it, you receive it, you can feel it. Somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. You got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel love. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice of the same old lies If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside There's a better life 
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. That is very loud. Can you turn this one down just a little bit, Jay, the yellow one? Thank you. It is so good to see everybody this morning. It's already been a pretty big weekend. We had the food drive yesterday, and I'm sure the pastor's going to talk about that. It was a lot of fun. A lot of people here yesterday. A lot of visitors here today. It is so good to see new faces. What a blessing it is, and we're so glad that you're here. If you're watching online, Thank you for choosing Living Word this morning. It's going to be a great day, a powerful day here. And we just ask that God just come into this place and just fill our hearts. And let's just prepare right now to hear Stephen's message. So let's start singing. <clears throat> 
And I know he would have said, had he remembered, that everybody stand, if you can, for as long as you can, and we will get going. <laughs> Some may be saved. We just thank you for the blessings that you put in our life, Lord. We thank you for this church, for this congregation that is so willing to serve you, Lord. That's right. I just pray that you bless each one of them in turn, Lord. Please be with our pastor today as he pre preaches, mm. speaks to us today. Mm. Please give them your knowledge, Lord. That's right. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated for just a minute. Hey, thank you for being here this morning. I want to do something special today. I would like to have all of our veterans to come up stage for just a minute. If you are a veteran, will you please make your way up here and just come around here to the piano side and join me up here on the stage for just a minute. Come on up here. We want to recognize our veterans for just a minute. Stage is up here. Come this way. <laughs> All right, come on up here. Y'all make your way over on this side. That'll be better. That'll be good. We want to recognize our veterans this morning. Um, we are so blessed here at Living Word Baptist that we have so many um, men that have served. And I'll make sure we don't have any women. I, don't, I definitely don't want to miss anyone. So make your way. Come on up here. I want everyone. We got people that are watching online as well. I just want everyone to, to see how blessed we are. These men have served our country, and we just want to say thank you this morning. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Hey, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for serving our country. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. I love you. Thank you, brother. I love you. Amen. Amen. Aren't we blessed? This is a blessing right here. They don't make them like they used to. You know that? They don't make them like they used to. And I, man, I tell you, 
we need more men like these right here. And what a, what a blessing. That's all I can say. What a blessing y'all are. And I know we've got some that are watching online as well. You are a veteran. We want to say thank you for your service to our country as well. Uh, my dad always watches. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Amen. Before, hang on, hang on. Before you leave, before you leave, I, I want to pray for y'all. I just want to pray. Um, come, on, come on back here so everybody can see y'all. I know. Come on. Everybody's ready to get off this stage. Let me, let me lead us in a word of prayer of just thanking uh, these men and all of our men across our country. You know, we have um, many er, veterans. Okay, okay. I'm just making sure. Any, any more veterans? I, I don't want to miss you. Don't want to miss you. Are you a veteran? You? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, let's pray. I, I, I just know our country, um, I, don't, I don't have to tell you how, how declined we are in our country right now, but we need more men and women with boldness and courage that can serve like these men did. At a young age, these guys were giving their life to the country. You know, sometimes we, we look at them now and we say, wow, you know, y'all, y'all did such a good job. But these guys were in their 20s, right? Anybody younger than 20 when you served? 18? 18 years old? 17 years old. 17 years old. 19. Uh, younger than 20. And they're, and they're serving our country, leaving their families, leaving their country and going across the world. Sometimes we don't think about that. And, and we're, we are so thankful. So let's, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for these men, for their service. And God, we want to thank the ones that are watching online even right now. We want to thank you, God, for their service to our country. And Lord, I just pray today that before uh, anyone leaves, we, we recognize these men and we shake their hands. We hug their necks and say thank you. Thank you for their sacrifice. Thank you for their commitment. And Father, I pray that we will raise up new men and women that will serve so boldly just as these men have served. So, Father, we thank you for blessing us with these men. Thank you, Lord, for their sacrifice. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. One last time. Thank you, men. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. A couple of announcements. Uh, Tom, want to recognize Tom just walked in. He is a veteran as well. Thank you, Tom. And, and your wife, Stephanie. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much for your service. Um, so I look out today and I see a lot of visitors with us. Thank you. Thank you for making Living Word Baptist your place of worship uh, today. Last week we had um, a, a large number of people uh, that we're visiting with us as well. So I want to say to our members, it's okay not to sit in your normal seat because we've got <laughs> several pews right here that are open. Y'all can make your way forward, okay? I promise I will not spit on you. That is one promise. I will back up. I will make sure that you're okay. Um, but thank you for being here today. What a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. What a wonderful day Amen. to say that we're going to come and worship and You've made this place your place of worship today, and I pray that God uh, just is glorified through you being here. Yesterday, we had a great food distribution. Uh, we had 35 families come through. We served 35 families and had one salvation, so praise Amen. the Lord for that. Um, young lady by the name of Denise was saved yesterday, and she came through the line, and um, Miss Suzanne... Back in the back. Back in the back. Miss Sus there, there, there you are. Miss Suzanne prayed with her, and Diane was right there witnessing uh, the whole thing. And what a wonderful, wonderful, it was worth it all. Mm, that, that is worth right. it all. So what a wonderful blessing it was. And everybody had smiles on their faces, and we were giving hope. We were giving joy. And that's exactly what we're called to do as Christians. So, church, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your commitment uh, to our food distribution. I know it's an overwhelming uh, amount of people that are involved. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. All right, real quick, uh, Wednesday night's going to be a little bit different as far as our fellowship meal, okay? What we're going to do is uh, we're asking you to bring your favorite Thanksgiving side. The church is going to provide the turkey and the ham, and we're going to have a wonderful Thanksgiving 
pre, a pre-Thanksgiving dinner. How's that? We're going to get warmed up for Thanksgiving uh, this Wednesday. So the following Training. Wednesday, we're not going to have services. So we're going to have our Thanksgiving meal this Wednesday. So I hope that you can join us. Mm-hmm. I hope that you can be here. All right. Um, there is something that I'm missing. I know that I am. And I don't know what it is. So I guess it will come later when it comes to me. Anybody else have that problem? Okay. <laughs> Two of you? Okay. Y'all can... Y'all can help me out. All right. Well, thank you for being here. We're we going to worship some more. Let's worship some more. Let's do it. Y'all want to stand? Let's stand and worship. Oh, Suzanne's not. I'm sitting here going, something. Where's Suzanne? Right. Now I really, it takes me a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, Suzanne. I will say this, since I always seem to have something to say, and this mic is still ringing just a little bit, and I'm holding way down Uh, just two things first of all I'm a little stuffy so if you see me put my hand up to my ear it's not because I don't want to hear everybody else singing I just can't hear myself and it might sound bad if I don't and the second thing is I think the next song that we're singing is evidence and I've said this before that all of us can look around every day and find even if you have the worst day the worst situation you can find the smallest bit of evidence of God's love and mm. mercy on us. That's right. And when I think on Veterans Day of our country and Tim's little grandpa that died when he was nine in his nineties, he was one of the last survivors of the Battle of the Bulge. And I think about how blessed we are to be in this country and yeah. there's so much more that we have in common than divides us. If if, and all we can do, I've come to realize this, the only thing we can do is pray that God changes hearts. That's the only hope because people in high places aren't going to change it for us. It's going to be us and to the visitors. We're a little church, it looks like, but we love real big. Amen. And we love Amen. having you all here. Right. And believe that just this little church in the middle, that used to be in the middle of nowhere, now it's in the middle of everything. Is going to do something mighty. And so I sure. like to say, and I said this the other day, we're small but mighty. So there you go. All right. All my sins 
And I'm not called to be a preacher. But when you think oh. about it, it, it says nothing compares to the promise I had in you. The promise, the promise that he's going to take care of us. We can lose every worldly and every, every worldly possession we have, but we can still hold fast to the promise that God's going to take care of us. Amen. I mean, that Amen. Is. We don't deserve it, but he is. Now I'll be quiet. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. 
grab our Bibles and let's turn to Luke chapter 5 and as you're making your way there I want to go ahead and dismiss the children for children's church uh, anywhere from first grade and below we have children's church for you they're making their way out right now Miss Suzanne standing at the back door Stephanie's over here at the other door look at all these children I love it love it love it all right Thank you, thank you, moms and dads, for bringing your children to church. What a wonderful, wonderful time. I got the best discipline from my dad while I was in church. I got the most trouble when I was sitting in church as a kid. I remember one time he reached over and grabbed my leg to be quiet, and I jumped and hollered, and then I got a, in trouble for jumping and hollering. I was like, what? What am I supposed to do? But anyways, anyways, I'll have to share this story with you one time. Uh, the church that I grew up in, uh, our youth sat right back there where those youth are sitting uh, today. And, uh, you know, the worst thing you can do is put kids in the back corner, right? Because that's where they misbehave. But uh, these are very well behaved uh, 
they're, they're in college, most of them, so we're, they're, they're very well behaved. But anyways, I was sitting back there, and I, and I had a little pocket knife. You know, as a kid, you know, you know kids used to carry knives, and it was okay, uh, but can't do that nowadays. But anyways, I had my pocket knife. You know, I was playing with my pocket knife here in church. I was minding my own business, and all of a sudden, I look up, and my dad's going like this. And I was like, me? <laughs> I had to make a choice right then. What do I do? Okay, so these thoughts, you know, immediately start going through my mind of, I can ignore it, all right, and it'll go away, all right, but it will not. I knew in the back of my mind, it would not go away, and I just looked again, and he's like, he pointed at me and went like this. Still remember today, I had to get up and walk over there and sit with my dad. It was the most humiliating time in my life. It was so embarrassing, and it's like, I, I don't understand what I was doing wrong. I was minding my own business, and after church was over, he goes, you know why I did that? And I was like, not really. You weren't paying attention to the message. And I was like, oh, goodness, <laughs> I got to pay attention. And, and so from that point on, I always made sure, number one, I didn't bring my knife to church. <laughs> and I paid attention to the message. So, hey, thank you for being here today. Luke chapter 5 is where we're going to be this morning. I want us to look at this passage of scripture that we're going to see today in a new light, Okay. God has revealed to me some things in this passage of scripture that I want to share with you as we go through it. But aren't you glad that we have God's blessings? Aren't you glad that we have God's blessings? Now, I need you to help me preach this morning, all right? Because there's a couple people when I said, aren't you glad you have God's blessings? You were like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What if we didn't have God's blessings, right? And then all of a sudden we got God's blessings. We'd be like, yeah, I got God's blessing finally. Yeah, we're excited. Some of you are just blessed too much. I get it. I get it. You're just blessed too much. Is it possible to be blessed too much? I don't, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think you can be blessed uh, too much. Um, let's take a look at uh, Luke chapter 5 this morning. And I've got to hurry now because Tim ran over in our worship time. So now you're going to make me hurry. Man, okay. All right, here we go, here we go. Luke chapter 5. I want to read the first 11 verses, and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about it because I really want us to focus on this passage of Scripture today as we consider God's blessings, all right? Now, you, you may not, if you were looking for a passage of Scripture about God's blessings, you probably would not turn to this passage of Scripture. And, and I kind of intended it to be that way. Um, but anyways, here we go. We're going to see God's blessings through this passage of Scripture. Uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 1. So it was... Now, remember, Luke is writing this, uh, the gospel according to Luke. Now, I want, I want you to know this about Luke, okay? He wants you to know about Jesus, and he's going to do whatever he can to tell you about Jesus, show you about Jesus, and let you see Jesus in his writing, okay? Luke was not a disciple, uh, but he is writing this gospel about Jesus because he wants you to know Jesus, right? Do you know Jesus today? Okay, three of you. All right, so by the time the altar's going to be full this morning, I promise you. So it was as, I need your help today, I really do, I need your help preaching. As the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, okay? Some of you probably know this as the Sea of Galilee. Uh, th this was a very familiar spot for Jesus, kind of his headquarters for teaching and preaching. Early in his ministry, right, you go back to Luke chapter 4 and you can see uh, the, the miraculous things that took place for Jesus uh, to come into his ministry. He was tempted for 40 days, Luke chapter 4. And now we're in Luke chapter 5, and we're seeing that the ministry of Jesus, the earthly ministry, is in full effect. People are knowing about Jesus. People are hearing about Jesus, and people want to listen to Jesus. He's got a message to teach and to preach, and we see that there's a multitude of people coming to hear him. So he stood by the lake. He stood, I can just see Jesus now at the beach. He's standing at the beach, and all everybody's looking at him, and he's teaching, and he's preaching. And people are just astonished, amazed at the words that he has to say. By the way, Jesus was the most profound teacher and preacher that has ever lived. I mean, he was and is the word of God. That's our Jesus. Look. Uh, five two. Now, he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Make sure you pay close attention to that. 
Because that, that is very significant right there. What, what were the, the, these men doing? What were they doing? They were washing their nets. Just remember that. And then now verse 3. Then he, Jesus, got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and that's Simon Peter, and asked him, or if you have the King James Version, it prayed him, requested of Peter that he put out a little from the land, and he sat down in the boat and taught the multitude from the boat. You know why? It was the free PA system. Jesus is the inventor of the PA system. He got in the boat, went out in the water, so many people, they couldn't hear him, so he gets... <laughs> I got a PA system guy back here sitting on the back row, just gave me a little... That was funny. You, had, you have to agree with that. That was funny. So anyways, Jesus... Is in the boat, and his sound is going across the water, okay? And, and, and everybody can hear him now. There were so many people packed around. And so now, people can hear Jesus speaking. He's in the boat. He's sitting down, teaching. Where's Peter at? Where's Peter? We, we don't know if he's in the boat with Jesus or if he's outside the boat, holding the boat in position, holding the pulpit right there that Jesus was at. All right, verse 4, and when he had stopped speaking, when he was through with speaking, he said to Simon Peter, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Watch what Peter says next. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, pay close attention to that. He calls him Master. We have tooled all night and caught what? Nothing. We have spent the whole night fishing and we have caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Peter is very submissive to the master, right? Every servant should be submissive to the master. And that's exactly what Peter is doing, being submissive. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, watch this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was stretching to the point that it was about to break. All right, you see the blessing? See the blessing here? They didn't catch anything, and now they are blessed so much that their nets are breaking. So they signaled, they whistled at their partners that were close by, right? There was two boats. And the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both the boats so much that they began to sink. How many of you are sinking in the blessings of God today? Good, because by the time this message is over, I want you to be sinking in the blessings of God. I want you to know that God wants to bless you. Verse 8, so when Simon Peter saw it, when he saw the miraculous catch, when he saw the blessing of God, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Watch this. Oh, Lord. A while ago, he called him Master. Now he's calling him Lord. So amazing that you see this. Verse 9, For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. Right? And so also were with him James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you're going to catch men. You're done being a fisherman. You're going to be fishing for men. So when we see this last, so when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Father, today I pray that you speak to us. Lord, fill our hearts and our minds with the things that you want us to know from this passage of scripture. Lord, there's so much that I want to say. I don't have time to say it all, but Lord, let, let the most important thing come out. Lord, we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, here we go. What were these men doing? What were they doing? They were washing their nets. Now, something does not add up to me. Why were they washing their nets when Jesus was right there? He was teaching. He was standing on the side of the lake, and he was teaching, and he looked over, and he saw two boats and saw them washing their nets. Now, Peter's response to Jesus was, Lord, we have caught nothing. Why were they washing their nets? They didn't catch anything. 
Why were they watching, washing their nets? It doesn't make sense to me, does it? Does it make sense? Why would they be going through the act of washing their nets if they hadn't caught anything? They went through the whole night, and here they are professional fishermen, and they didn't catch anything, but yet Jesus and Luke, they want us to know they were washing their nets. And I want to say this because I think it makes really good sense today. There's a lot of folks today that have empty nets. And they're going through the motions. They're going through the motions of life saying, God, I want you to bless me. God, I want you to do this for me. God, I want you to help me. We come to church, we worship, we go out of worship, we go into our lives, and we look back and we say, God, why are you not blessing me? I've done all these things. Why aren't you blessing me? And some people still end up with empty nets. But what I want you to see today is your nets do not have to be empty. It's your perspective on life. Your nets don't have to be empty. In fact, your nets can be overflowing with blessings. Your nets can be breaking, stretching to the point to where you're calling for help. Hey, I've got so many blessings heading my way. I need you to come get some. Anybody ever had that phone call before? Hey, I got so much money in the bank, I need you to come get some. Anybody ever had that? Hey, if you ever have that problem, call me. I will be there very quickly. How many has ever had so much food in the refrigerator here? Hey, come get some meat. I got so much frozen meat. I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what we're going to do with it. I had that problem this past week. Sure enough, we don't have big enough freezers here at this church. Grace Bridge brought so much meat that we're packing it. We're putting it in the freezers. I mean, they're solid. I'm starting to call people up saying, hey, can, can, can we use your freezer? We have so much meat. Why, we don't know what to do with all this meat. What a blessing it is. And I, I was calling some of my neighbors. I was like, hey, I, I got some meat here. It's thawing. I don't know what to do with it. I'm, I'm calling some of my neighbors. And I'm saying, hey, you got room for your freezer? I got some meat for you. And, and they're like, man, my, my, my freezer's packed full. I'm like, what's wrong with these people? We, our blessings are overflowing, and we're trying to give it away. And everybody else, man, we're just so blessed right now. But yesterday, we were so joyful to be able to give out so much meat and so much food to every person that came through. And I got, I got a little story I'm going to share with you here in just a minute. But what an amazing, amazing passage of scripture this is. Well, let's, let's start over and let's go back through this because I don't want to miss anything. But I want to I share some things with you, okay? I want you to notice first, nothing, nothing, say nothing, nothing happens by accident nothing happens by accident do you believe that you believe that god is in control of all things god ordains all things to happen according to his will absolutely nothing happens by accident and we always need to remember this because uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and share this yesterday we had a man pull into our parking lot and if you were here there were so many cars lined up at the very beginning that uh, this van uh, had pulled in and he was coming through the line, and by the time that he got past the administrators and he got past the, the encouragers, he got to the point to get food, and somebody come and got me and says, this man's not here for food, he's here to make a delivery. And I'm like, well, this is not making sense. And uh, he, he was Spanish speaking, and we, and we had a, a young man, he's like, hey, he, he, he was trying to meet somebody, he was actually needed to go the next driveway over to meet somebody, and I looked up, and they're over there waiting for him. But he was stuck in line, all right, had to wait almost 20 to 30 minutes to get through our, our line, and, and he declined the food, says he didn't need any food, right? But here's the thing, nothing happens by accident because we were able to pray with him, and that was no accident. He may have pulled in the wrong driveway, but it was by no accident that he got prayed for. And I remember talking uh, to, to Manuel, and he's like, I got to pray with him anyways. And he didn't want the food, but we got to pray with him, and it was so good. Nothing happened by accident. Look at verse 1 again. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that people were so anxious to hear the word of God. It's not like churches today. Not, a lot of people are not anxious to hear the word of God, right? We've we got empty seats all around us. A lot of churches are empty today. There's just not an anxiousness about hearing the word of God. I wish that was different, but that's just the way it is today. But the multitude had pressed in to hear the word of God, and Jesus is standing teaching. It's by no accident, watch this, that he saw two boats 
nearby the lake, and uh, he was, notice that there's two boats, because he walks up and he asks Peter, or prays to Peter, hey, will you let me get into your boat and use it as a pulpit, as a PA system to carry my voice across the water? What if Peter would have said no? There's another boat just in case. And I wonder sometimes if we're the same way that God is asking us if he could use our resources, the things that he has blessed us with, can I use that for my glory? And I wonder sometimes, do we say no? I wonder sometimes if we're so quick to say, Lord, you can have anything that I own. Lord, you can use anything that I have for your glory. That's the kind of attitude we need, isn't it? And that's the kind of attitude that Peter had. He was quick to respond. Yes, Lord, use my boat. Use it. Obviously, he wasn't doing a very good job with it through the night. So he's like, you know what? I'm not using it to catch fish, so let's use it for a speaking opportunity. So verse 3, when he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out, uh, put, put a little bit from the land, and he sat down. I, I, I love the fact that Luke tells us he describes what's happening. He was standing and now he's sitting, okay? That means he's been there for a long time. Scholars believe that they were probably there between four to five hours listening to Jesus preach. I like that. I think we ought to try that sometime. Four to five hours. I wonder who would remain. I wonder who would still be here. My stomach's growling. I got to go eat or something. You know, that's amazing to see the attitude of the people where they were so engaged at the teaching and the preaching of God's word, that they wanted more. They wanted to absorb more into their life. They needed it. They wanted it. And they were attracted to it. And that makes all the difference in the world. But he sat down and he taught the multitude of people from the boat. All right, number two. Things will happen when we obey Jesus. Amen? When we obey Jesus, God will bless our obedience. God will bless us for obeying his commandments. But it's not just out of an attitude of I must obey. It's an attitude of I will obey because I do want to see God's blessings. I will obey because I love Jesus. I just love Jesus, so I will do whatever he commands me to do. Isn't that what John said in his gospel? If you obey, if you love me, Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. You'll do what I ask you to do. You'll do those things. And as a Christian, we shouldn't have to think about obeying Jesus. We shouldn't have to think about what are God's commandments. What are the commandments of Jesus? If they ought to be right there on our mind. They ought to be right there on our lips. And we must respond in obedience to God's word. We ought to be so instant in obedience, not just because we're looking for a blessing. We don't put our money into the box to tithe. We don't give our offerings just so that we can do it as a business transaction or maybe go into the casino. If I give a little bit, then he's going to bless me with a whole lot more. We do it because we love Jesus. We give of ourselves. We give of our time. We give of our resources. We give of our money because we love Jesus. And that's what he expects from his children. Are y'all with me? I might need some oxygen here in a minute. Verse 4. When he had stopped speaking. Now, nothing happens by accident, right? It was no accident that Peter was held captive as an audience. He had to listen to every word that Jesus spoke, right? I could just see Peter now holding that boat in position, looking up at Jesus. Oh, that's good. That, that's good stuff right there. Just listening to Jesus, listening to his teaching. Because when Jesus is teaching, it's nothing but good. It's nothing but good that he can give. Hey, over in uh, James chapter 1, verse 17, uh, James says, Every good and perfect gift comes from what? The Father up above. And so we know that as Peter's sitting there listening, he's a captive audience, and he's listening to the message that Jesus is trying to preach and teach. And, and Peter's soaking it in. He's just listening and getting it all in. And now he's done speaking, and he said to Simon, okay, now we're going to illustrate this message. We're going to illustrate this. Launch out into the deep. Get in the boat, and let's go out to the deep. And watch this. And let down your nets for a catch. Let me say this real quick. Sometimes God wants us to do some radical things. 
that sometimes will not make sense. Does that make sense? Sometimes God will want us to go over and beyond what we have already tried. And sometimes we try to do it without him. And now he's trying to say, go do it again. But here, I want you to see this. Because Peter allowed Jesus to use his boat, now Jesus' response is, Peter, I'm fixing to bless you. I know. I know that you've been out all night. You've been working hard. You're a professional fisherman, and you've caught nothing. I'm well aware of it. How many of you know that God is fully aware of what's happening in your life? Absolutely. Same thing here. Peter is fully aware that they didn't catch anything. Jesus is fully aware. I'm about to bless your socks off. And here it goes. As soon as they launch out into the deep, all right? Now, watch what Simon said here. Master, master, I, I understand you're a great teacher. You're a great preacher. You say some good words. But listen, we've been out here on this lake all night long, and we hadn't caught a single thing. And, I, you know, you know I'm, I'm not going to argue with you because I respect you for who you are because he called him master. That, that's a great respectful attitude to have with somebody like that. So he says, Master, we, we've toiled all night and, we, and we've caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, we will, I will let down the net. All right? Hey, sometimes we're just at our rock bottom. Sometimes we don't know what else to do. And we hear the voice in the back of our minds. We hear the voice in our hearts saying, do it one more time. Maybe it's speaking to your neighbor. Man, you just, you've talked to them till you're blue in the face about accepting Jesus. You've done all that you can do to tell them about Jesus. And all of a sudden, you hear the voice saying, go one more time. Go one more time. What if we didn't go one more time? They may not be in heaven. So it's important, important to know that God wants us to obey his commandments. Be instant in your obedience. So nonetheless, at your word, I'm going to let down the net. And when they had done this, instant obedience re resulted in instant blessing. They caught a great number of fish. How many fish did they catch? Couldn't even count them. Couldn't even count. Fish were just coming in all over the place. I'm telling you, I'm the worst fisherman that has ever lived. I do not like fishing because I never catch anything. Bob Allen's not here, but he took me fishing on a cold winter day uh, last year. And, and I, I don't like going fishing with somebody that knows what they're doing, right? Because when you go fishing with somebody that knows what they're doing, you really look like an idiot. You really do. And so nonetheless, right, I'm throwing the pole out there and I'm just reeling it in. I'm just, this is a waste of time. This is a waste of time. You know, I get on my phone, you know. And he's over, he's reeling them in. Reeling them in one after another. And I'm like, what? I'm using the same type of pole, using the same type of bait. I'm not catching anything. And if you know Bob, he looks over at me and he goes, have you tried praying for forgiveness? <laughs> and I'm thinking, what? I mean, come on, you're, you're, finding, you're throwing the preacher under the mat. And so, uh, you know, you know what I did. Lord, forgive me of my sins. About that time I caught one. I was like, wow, look at this. It only took one fish and it got me excited again. I'm like, okay, we're going to try this again. Throw it out there. Nothing, nothing. And there was one time he was feeling so sorry for me. He caught one and then handed me his pole and said, you reel it in. I don't need you to feel sorry for me. I don't need you to feel sorry for me. I'm not a fisherman, all right? I don't like fishing like that because I don't ever catch anything, it seems like. But that's okay. Some of you are naturals at it. How, how many of you are good at something? You're good at something, all right? Maybe it's shopping. How many of you women are good at shopping? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some of you men are like, oh, my wife is real good at shopping. How many of you are good at... Um, any nurses? Any nurses or doctors? In that? Okay, all right. So, you know, we, we hear this all the time. There's good doctors and there's not so good doctors, right? We call them bad doctors sometimes. Do not go back to that doctor. But then what, what about mechanics, right? We got good mechanics and we got not so good mechanics, right? And we don't take our car back to the uh because they're bad mechanics. Uh, what about good teachers or bad teachers? I don't, I don't want to single out anybody, but how many of you remember some good teachers in your life? Right now, we, we have some really good teachers. How many of you remember some bad teachers in your life? So, okay, I put my hand down because I'm not going. I'm not going to be real here. How many of you know good preachers? Anybody know some good preachers? Three of you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but listen, when when we think about this, Peter Peter's mindset is like this: I'm good at what I do. I know what I'm doing. I'm good at it. In fact. I've made a business out of it. I make a living at it. 
I, I do what I do because God has given me the talent to do it. And so here Peter has spent all night uh, being humbled because now he's calling himself a professional, but he didn't catch anything. And so now he's got some explaining to do, right? I mean, Jesus is saying, well, let your net down and see what happens. And he's having this little conversation. He's like, Jesus, you know, I've been out here all night. We didn't catch anything. But nonetheless, whatever you say at your word, I'm going to do it. I wonder what his attitude was when he's starting to pull in all these fish. Man, where were you through the night, Jesus? Because we needed you through the night. We wouldn't have to be back out here during the day. And by the way, day fishing was not very popular. It was through the early mornings that they would bring in all the fish. And now, here they are out here at 12, probably 1 o'clock in the afternoon. All these fish are coming into the boat. I mean, their nets are stretching, they're breaking, and, and they're getting ready. Now, I, I told you a while ago, what were they doing washing their nets if they hadn't caught anything through the night? I want to say this, because God just laid this on my heart. They were preparing for the blessing. They were preparing for what God was about to do. Nothing happens by accident. Nothing will happen by accident. So here, the disciples, are, or the, the, the men right here, they're not disciples yet. And so they're getting all their nets prepared for the next day, unaware that they were fixing to have the catch of their life, that everything was going to be changed on this day. So all these fish were coming in. And they even had to share the blessings with their partners to say, hey, bring your boats. We got so many fish, they're just jumping up out of the water into the boat. Anybody ever had that problem before? You don't have Jesus in your boat. So when, when you think about having all these blessings coming in, they couldn't handle the blessings. They couldn't handle what God was doing for them, but they were prepared for it. And I wonder sometimes, we ask for God to bless us, but are we prepared for it? God, I want you to bless my marriage. Let me ask you, are you prepared for it? God, I want you to bless my children. Are you prepared for it? I heard somebody pray one time. They said, God, I want you to use my child in the ministry. Make him a preacher. Make him whatever you want to be. And I heard somebody else say, you want him to go to China or Russia? And they were like, Lord, make my child a preacher right here in my hometown. Be prepared for those blessings. Be prepared for those blessings because you never know. God, hey, listen, I, I, I want to speed up just a little bit because I want you to see this. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you. I, I, don't, I don't think we really fully understand that. Because every good and perfect gift comes from above. From the Father of the lights, James says. All good things come from God. Now listen to this. Satan, the devil, our adversary, does not want to bless you. You know what he wants to do? He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to rob you of your joy. He wants to make you sick. He wants you to have a frown on your face. But that's not the God that we serve. Because God wants to bless you so much that you can't help but just pick up the phone one day and say, you're not going to believe this. I've got so many blessings coming in right now, I can't handle it. I don't know what to do. You're having to call the preacher up and say, why is God blessing me so much? And my response is going to be, you must be doing something right. You must be, all, 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 you're doing something perfectly for God. I mean, you are in 100% obedience to God at that point because you're being blessed. Now, how many of you have had seasons that the blessings weren't coming in? Okay. So th there's been times in my life as well, the blessings weren't coming in. So th those are times that I take a little self-examination, right? Okay, Lord, what, what, what's going on right now? Because I don't feel like you're blessing me. In fact, I, I, I feel like my family is sick. I feel like that uh, uh, I got some bills that are coming in that I don't know how I'm going to pay. Uh, my car just doesn't want to run very good. I don't know how I'm going to take care of that. I've got some repairs at my house that's got to be done. I don't know. My preacher's upset with me. I don't understand why. Uh, all these things are just piling in one after another, one after another. And, and so we start to pray prayers like this. Lord, will you bless me? Lord, will you, send, will you just open up the floodgates from heaven? Will you bless me? Will you bless me? I, I, I want to say this before we leave today because if you miss this, you missed the whole message. 
I'm not a prosperity preacher, okay? We don't need possessions in this life to be blessed, okay? We don't need fancy cars and big houses and nice clothes to be blessed. That is not what this is about, okay? And we're going to see it here in just a second. But what we do need is the joy of the Lord. We need the joy of the Lord because there are some days it is only the joy of the Lord that gets me through. Because I know that in the end, I'm blessed. I have the free gift of salvation, and that's all that matters. Because without Jesus, you're nothing. And if you don't have Jesus, you don't have heaven. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have God on your side. If God be with us, then who can be against us, right? If you're not a Christian, that, that, that verse does not fit you. So more than anything, we need Jesus. And that's all that matters, okay? Now, God wants to bless you. God wants to pour out blessings so much. I think it's over in Deuteronomy chapter 30 that, that there, there was, uh, he's, he, he got Israel out there and he said, look, I want you to see there's blessing and there's curse, but now you've got to choose. You've got to choose which one do you want. And I think it's the same way today. Either we can choose to be blessed by God or we can choose not to be blessed by God. And it's all up to you. But God wants to bless you. God wants to pour out his blessings on you. God wants you to be happy. God wants you to be successful. God wants you to be able to glorify him in all things. Watch this. When Simon Peter, verse 8, saw it, saw the blessing, saw the miracle of all these fish coming in, he fell down at Jesus' knees and started worshiping him. But watch what he says. Depart from me. For I'm a sinful man, O oh Lord. I believe sometimes God wants to bless us so much so that we will see who he truly is. That he is the creator of the world. He doesn't need your money. He doesn't need what you have. But he just wants to bless your socks off. He just wants to pour out the blessings so that you will remember who he is. And all we can do is sit back and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for blessing me. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve what you've given me. I don't deserve any of this, but you have overwhelmed me with your blessings. And all I can do is say thank you. And this is where Peter is. He's falling down. He's in an in a, a, a attitude of worship at this point. He is worshiping Jesus saying, I should not be standing right here. I should not be in your presence because I'm a sinful man. I have sin in my life and you're all God. But what a blessing it is to be right here in your presence. That's when you know you're blessed. That's when you know you're truly blessed is when you can say, Lord, I don't deserve this. I don't even deserve half of what you've given me. But you know, that's also what we call contentment. When you're content with what God has given you. Depart from me. You see, when God blesses us, he wants us to know who he is. But he also wants us to know who we are. Because where that blessing comes from, guess what? Another blessing can come right behind it. And when that blessing comes, another blessing can come. It's almost like uh, when, when we see over uh, the, the Elijah, he went to the widow, and she had the last of her bit of flour, and she was going to go make some biscuits, and they were going to die, but that flour never ran out. The oil never ran out. They just kept making biscuits over and over. I want to find out what kind of biscuits those were because those were good. But that's how God works. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless what you do. God wants to bless your family, your children. God wants to bless you at your work. God wants to bless your work. But are we prepared for it? Are we prepared? Are we doing what we should be doing with what God has already given us? Because if he'll trust us with a little bit, right, he'll bless us with more. And so when we are doing what we're called to do with what God has given us and we're using it for his glory, watch out because there's more coming back. No wonder we have so much frozen meat coming in. And we didn't buy a single bit of it. It's all been donated. It's all just coming in, rolling in. Why? Because we got some faithful people that will stand out here on Saturday with a smile on their face and just saying, we just want to give you hope of Jesus Christ. And look at the floodgates being opened up for more coming in. We, we had a, man, I could, I could preach all day long about that, but I got to keep going because some of y'all are getting restless now. Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. We need to be reminded who we are, okay? Verse 9, for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch. They were just amazed at what had just 
taken place. And, and Luke wants us to know who was with him. But watch this. Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. For now on, you're, you're, you've got a career change now. Now you work for me. Now you're not going to be a fisherman of fish, but you're going to be fishing for men. All right? Now, most important verse right here. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Did you get that? The biggest catch of their life. Now, what is a, what's a fisherman going to do with his fish? They're going to go sell them. What did they do? Left them. You know what they discovered that day? We don't need anything else but Jesus Christ. Because if he'll do that in a time of need, there's no telling what else he can do for us. And these guys understood it. These guys got it. They forsook all. You know what the problem we have sometimes? God blesses us with a little bit of money in the bank, and we say, how can I get some more? Instead of saying, oh, man, God blessed me with some money. Let me give it away. Wow, see, that's a different concept, isn't it? Man, my, my refrigerator's full. Hey, let's see if we can pack it in. Let's go buy another refrigerator and see what we can. No, how about we give it away? But you see, that's where it takes faith. Because in the back of our mind, we're thinking, but it's not always going to be like this. We're not always going to be blessed. Hey, listen, God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you. He wants to do whatever he can to make sure that you're blessed. And he's going to make sure you have everything you need. So why do we need to worry? Why do we need to worry about a thing? Okay? Now, I want to say this. We can't have a blessing. Or we can't have a miracle without a problem. Does that make sense? We can't have a blessing or a miracle until we have a problem. And I heard a preacher say this one time. You got big problems, guess what? You're about to have big miracles. You got little problems, you're just going to have a little miracle. You're just going to have a little blessing. I don't know about you, but I like that. And I, I, I've been changing the way I've been praying. Lord, give me a lot of problems. Just pile them on me, Lord, because I want to see these miracles. I want to see the blessings come in. That's kind of been my attitude. My wife's over there. Uh -uh, uh -uh. No, don't say that in church either. You know. So when we think about God's blessings... Are you in a position to receive a blessing from God? Are you ready for it? Listen, are your nets empty? Are your nets empty? Maybe that joy is not what it used to be, and you want that joy, right? And deep down in your heart, you're preparing for it. But listen, you've got to be ready to receive it. Because when it comes, you can't have a bad attitude. You can't be down in the dumps with a frown on your face. You've got to be saying, okay, God, I'm looking for the blessing to come. I know it's coming because that preacher said, you want to bless me, and I'm ready for it. Where is it coming? We're watching for it, and boom, when it hits, we're saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then I want you to test this. I want you to give that away. I, want, I just want you to give it away. Somebody blesses you with a card, just give it away. It got quiet, didn't it? <laughs> Somebody bless you with a house, give it away. Just give it away. See what happens next. Man was sitting in church one day, and uh, it was kind of one of those testimony nights. And man stood up, and he was so boastful and prideful. And he says, "Preacher, I want to tell you about this that happened in my life. Ten years ago, I was right here in this same church. I didn't have but five dollars to my name, and now I'm a millionaire. But this is what happened. I put my last five dollars into that offering plate." And God just miraculously blessed me, and now I have a million dollars. And the preacher looked at him and said, well, put that million dollars in the offering plate. I don't know what happened, but I can guarantee you it probably wasn't a million dollars. But, you know, what's our attitude sometimes? What's our attitude? Are we looking for God's blessing? Are we expecting God's blessings? Are we prepared for God's blessings? Because I don't know about you, but I want God's blessings. I want them to be flowing in. But I want to be ready for them because I want to know what to do with them, right? God's not going to bless us. I'm going to say this. God's not going to bless us with a lot of children until we know what to do with them. God's not going to bless us with a lot of money unless we know what to do with it. God's not going to bless us with a lot of buildings unless we know what to do with them. God's not going to bless us with a lot of food until we know what to do with it. Does that make sense? God's blessings are coming in. This is what I want to do. I'm going to do something different today. I want you to please stand. I want you to stand. Um, hey, we're not going to close 
in a, in a, in a song today. We're, we're going to do something a little bit different. It's okay if we do something a little bit different. I think we should pray for God's blessings. I think that there are some people here today that need the blessings of God. Okay? Now, um, I, I think that, I, and I don't want to get personal. I, I don't want to get personal with anybody. But I know that there are some people that are here, there's people that are watching online, that, that they need a different job. Or they need a job. Or, or they have a child that needs to be changed. Or they have a circumstance that if God does not intervene, something bad is going to happen. Does that make sense? Okay, and, and that's across the room. Don't think that, that anybody's ever not been in that position. Okay? I don't want to single out anybody. Okay? And I don't even want you to raise your hand. I don't, I don't want you to do anything right now. But I, I want you to know. I want you to know this. God wants to bless you. But I think sometimes we have to ask for it. I think we have to pray for those blessings. I, I think God's waiting for us just to say, ask and you shall receive. And so what I want to do right now is if, if you want, I'm, I'm not trying to single out anybody. If you want a special blessing to happen in your life, will you just come forward? I think sometimes we use this altar right here as a place of repentance. Come on, come on, just come on up here. If, if you want a blessing to happen in your life, come on up here. I'm going I'm to make my way down. We're, we're going to do it differently today. I, I, I think sometimes when I have an uh, invitation time, uh, it, it's only for those that need to accept Christ or need to make a decision or need to repent of a sin. That's not what this is about today. Because before you leave today, I want you to be blessed. I just, I just want you to be blessed. And so it, I, I know that there's a lot of people that just need the blessings of God. So come, in, come in tighter. We, we got some people coming down the side. I want you to come in a little bit tighter. Because I believe that God wants to bless us. God wants to pour out his blessings upon you. God wants things to happen in, in your favor. And, and that's what a blessing is. It's, it's God's favor on your life. Okay? Now... I'm not trying to single anybody out, but I just want to say this. Do you believe that God wants to bless you? Yes. Do you believe that God will bless you? Yes. Okay. Do you want God to bless your family? Yes. Absolutely. Do you want God to bless your finances? You want God to bless your church? You want God to bless your pastor? Yes. You got to pray for these things. Yes. I'm, 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 listen, I'm being very serious about this. You want me to preach better messages? Pray for me. Pray. Hey, God, bless our pastor with the word of God that he will preach messages that will speak life into my life, okay? It will happen if we pray that way. You want God to bless your, your work? You want God to bless where you go to school or where, where you go to work? Those things will happen. But listen, you have to be ready and you have to receive it, okay? So I want you to pray. I want you to pray with me right now all across this room. Don't think about nobody else. Don't think about anybody else. Just be focused on what God wants to do for you. Lord, thank you for these people. Thank you for this opportunity that we can pray and we can ask you, Lord, will you bless me even right now? God, we want to be in complete obedience to you. And God, I don't want to say anything or do anything outside of your will. But God, I know that there are some people in this building, there are some people that I know personally that need your favor they need what you have to give to them and lord i know most of their attitude is they're waiting to see what they have in store for me so god i pray in the name of jesus christ that you bless us bless each and every person here right now god that we may be ready to receive your blessings that you will bless our words that we speak. You will bless our finances. Lord, you will bless everything that we do for you. Lord, you will bless our vehicles. You will bless our homes. You will bless our workplaces. You will bless our schools. Lord, you will bless our church. God, we need you. And Lord, we already know you're going to bless us. Lord, we just, we just, we just want to be obedient to you. We want to be obedient to what you have in store for us. So Father, may we never misuse anything that you've given us. And Father, if we have, I pray to God that you forgive us. God, if there's something that I have misused, if I've missaid, please forgive me. God, I pray if there's anything that anybody has done right here that you're not 
allowing a blessing to come. Lord, I pray that it changed right now. Oh, and God, now the floodgates are being opened. And you're going to start blessing. The blessings are going to start coming. Lord, you tell us that if we just humble ourselves and pray, oh God, the blessings are going to come. And Lord, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you bless us. Lord, that you will bless each and every one of us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Are you ready? Are you ready for the blessings? Because I'm telling you, God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you in a mighty way. Amen. All right, go back to your seats. Go back to your seats. We're going we're to close up. Thank you for being here uh, this morning.